Thursday night baseball. You can tell it's great weather because the crowd is getting real thick here at uh, Dick Houser Stadium. Matthew Schaefer calling the balls and strikes tonight. Art Thigpen, the first base umpire. Will Prestwood at second. Vincent Kretchen is the third base umpire. Another foul ball. Makes it nothing in two. Kyle Jones, the true freshman from Athens, Georgia, riding an eight-game hitting streak. Had seven hits in the weekend series at Jacksonville. High bouncer left side, charged by Lodis, and just in time. That was a wonderful play by the shortstop at Florida State Seminoles. Saw that ball hit the ground, read the first hop, and it immediately rushed in to get that ball. Plays the good hop, gets rid of the ball first base for the fast running. Kyle Jones, great play here. You watch this, watch the shortstop just charge it hard. No stop in him. I like to see that. So Jones retired. Lorenzo Miola going after the first pitch. So four offerings, four swings from Stetson. Out of the gate against Brady Lauk. It was the top rated southpaw in Illinois coming out of high school. Catches the inside corner and quickly jumps ahead. Nothing in two. You like to see a young guy like Brady Lauk working ahead of batters. Um, you see it so far, obviously, first two. He's only thrown five pitches and he's thrown five strikes. There's his first ball. A little outside the zone there, but as a young pitcher, you're trying to teach these guys to. You know, beat the nerves and throw strikes and get ahead of the batters, and that's exactly what Brady Lauk's done so far. Two balls, two strikes on the Stetson shortstop Lorenzo Miola, sophomore from Greenbrook up in New Jersey. The 283 as a true freshman last year was on the A Sun third team, and now a full count. Stetson, a 35 win team last season, they finished second in the Atlantic Sun. Lipscomb was the A Suns representative in the postseason. This is lifted in the air to shallow right field. Tibbs battling the sunshine. Two outs. That ball is put just in the sun. Tibbs, you can see Tibbs almost has no shadow out there. So that ball's, he's fighting the sun for the next couple of innings out there at least. Great job. You see, you see a very, that's a, that's a, a talented and a veteran move. You see a guy that's taken a lot of fly balls in this right field during practice and games and runs under, uses his glove to block the sun, gets under it, and fights it for as long as he can right to the very end. Gio Cueto bats for the Hatters with two outs and the base is empty. Stetson starting catcher. The junior from Miami, a transfer from Wake Forest. Was on that Demon Deacon team that made a run into the College World Series last summer. He homered in Sunday's series finale at Jacksonville, hitting 324 through Stetson's first 21 games. Lines it to right field. It gets down in front of Tips. Two out single for Stetson in the hatter half of the first. Gio Cueto, you see a great swing from the three hole batter there. That was a, a good job of working ahead as a hitter. It's a lot easier to hit when you're ahead in the count. So. The young man, Brady Lout, falls behind 2-0, and Gio Cueto takes advantage of a sure, surefire fastball, shoots it in the right field for the first hit of the game. Gives a chance to Johan Dessera, the junior from Canada. Cleanup hitter, waves and misses at the first one from Brady Lauk. Dessera already with seven home runs, 19 RBIs on the season. Cuts through the fastball, falls behind nothing in two. Desera, who notched a career best eight home runs last season, on pace to go well beyond that number here in 2024. Stays alive on the nothing in two pitch. Now, Brady Lout, this is just his fifth appearance of 2024. And the first time he's pitched at home since late February when he threw a pair of scoreless innings here against Western Carolina. Did see him appear out of the bullpen in Gainesville last Tuesday in the win at Florida. Alex doing a great job, only falling behind one of his four batters so far, and that one batter obviously on first base with a single, but doing a really good job of working ahead of the other three batters that he's faced. 
in this matchup right here with that three-quarter arm slot from the lefty. Swing and a miss. Good off speed pitch. This DMS Ross is sitting out after suffering an injury Friday in the series opener against Notre Dame. So Williams, the sophomore from Ormond Beach, transfer from Alabama, has 10 hits in his first 34 at bats in a Seminole uniform. Yes, yeah, kid's really, really talented. Really talented. Cantu, or rather Morin, with a long flip to first base. And the big 6 6 Madunio able to get there in time. Now that looked like it was going to take him too far off the bag, but credit the 6 6 right hander for hitting off the mound quickly and racing over to first. Yeah, this was a really hard hit ball. Great play by the first baseman, uh, ranging to his right or to his right hand side. But even better job by the pitcher to get there and beat a, a very fast Max Williams. Max Williams hustling down the line all the way, made that play a lot closer than it probably should have been. Cam Smith takes ball one. It was another big weekend series for the sophomore from Lake Worth. Had five hits against Fighting Irish pitching. With two home runs, including a 448 foot shot here in the series finale on Sunday. Yeah, Cam Smith's been super impressive with his approach at the plate so far this year. He really has been able to use the entire ball field, including the 400, almost 50 foot home run he hit was opposite field. That tells you what kind of power this young man really can produce. Bounces the 2 0 pitch towards the middle, stopped by Miola, and there are two outs. So a pair of ground outs open up the Seminole half of the first. Madunio has retired the first two Florida State batters of the early evening. You see the shadows start to creep over home plate. That's always more of an advantage for a pitcher, at least at this juncture of the game. It usually is, absolutely. Um, the Seminole should be used to it a little bit, at least some of these guys. James Tibbs with two outs, and the base is clear. First pitch swinging. Desero throws him out. Seminoles go quickly. One, two in college baseball this year. Absolutely. And I'll tell you what, he is a super particular guy. Um, had the honor to play for him when I was uh, a young man at Mercer University. He was our assistant coach. And man, he can run a program very, very well. And you see what he's done here just just a short, short amount of time. You know, one full season plus, what, 18 games? So. He's done a heck of a job turning this squad around um, in just a short amount of time. And he's just foul outside the bag at third off the bat of the designated hitter, Daniel Labrador. Facing Brady Lauk, who gave up a two out single and ended the inning on a strikeout back in the first. The Florida State only 23 wins last year, already to 18 in the season's first month. Got a good chance to get there before the end of March. Tell you what, Daniel Labrador is a world class mustache, my friend. World class. Oh, yeah. How much, how much uh, product do you think he puts in there to, to keep it looking like that for all nine innings? Uh, although he is the designated hitter, so he can go back and work on that in between at bats. He's, he's got some time in the dugout to get that thing just right for his at bats, but I wouldn't know. I wish I could grow a mustache like that. I just can't do it. You and me both. Richard Jr. from Miami swings at the full count pitch, skies it to center. Williams waiting for it to come down. And that's the first out in the second. Yeah, Brady Lau doing a, a good job of coming back. Started uh, Labrador off with two balls, and you saw Labrador pull that ball just foul, almost got a double. Uh, but that worked Lau back into that count and allowed him to, to get Labrador to pop up. That's a that's a great job by the freshman to kind of work his way back into that at bat. Now facing Landon Moran, the starting first baseman. Sophomore right. from Altamont Springs hit 317 last year. Yeah, this this lineup's gonna be loaded with sophomores. Uh, Coach Tremper said five freshmen started for him last year, and those five freshmen are now sophomores and and doing a great job leading this lineup, doing a heck of a job. Takes high and tight, and Lauk falls behind 3 and 0. You see these freshman jitters from the front from the uh, freshman. That's four pitch walk. One out base runner for Stetson in the top of the second. Second early inning base runner for the Hatters. 
And here comes Jaden Hilton, the sophomore right fielder. He was on the A-Sun All Freshman team last year. Hit 272 with nine doubles, eight home runs. And that's five straight misses from Lauk. Hilton hitting 257 out of the gate this year with six doubles, two homers, 14 batted in. Yeah, Hilton's a big guy. Fills that batter's box up and uh, watching him take bangs. Well, you, you come through this program with that last name, you, you <laughs> should have a ton of success. You should. And we'll see if Lout can settle in there and find the strike zone as he misses with ball two to Hilton. This is the finale of a five game road trip for Stetson. They were at UCF last Tuesday, lost two of three in the conference's opening weekend at Jacksonville and finishing things up here in Tallahassee. Now it's 3 0 on Hilton. You see wow, he's gotten the, he's done a good job. He's bringing those balls down, so he's made the adjustment from the high pitches, but he's coming down a little too low. He's got to get that ball back in the zone right here. And his first career start has not logged more than two innings in the game through his first four appearances. He struck out all four hitters he retired in his inning in the third at Florida a week ago. And there's ball four. Back to back walks and Stetson has some traffic on the bases here in the top of the second. Well, this is one of those things that you're going to see from Stetson. They are patient hitters. They are very, very, very good at putting the bat on the ball. They don't have a ton of power as a team outside of a couple guys, but man, they're going to find their way on base. Their goal ever with every guy. I talked to Coach Tremper before the game, and he said, man, their goal is to get their guy to second base. If they can get them to second, they're confident they can score that guy. So. Now Jackson West, the catcher, out to chat with Lauk, who was missed with eight wide ones. After taking Daniel Labrador to center field on a routine fly ball to open the inning, already some action brewing in the home bullpen. Noah Short, senior right hander, starting to heat up. Yeah, I think Jackson's doing a good job of just killing some time, giving Short an opportunity down there to get his arm loose. See the home plate umpire going to break this up. He knows exactly what's, what's going on. Jackson, a, a, another local guy. From, uh, from Tallahassee was at Alabama last year. Got 20 games under his belt and uh, transferred back to his hometown. And he's done a heck of a job so far. He's actually uh, Coach Link Jarrett making the trip to the mound now. I think he's going to deuce that ground ball. Man, he's a sidearm guy. He's got uh, he can hit the high 80s with his fastball, but he can really spin it with his with his curveball and slide it across the plate. So he's out there trying to induce a double play to get them out of this inning. Link Jarrett playing the matchup right here, righty to righty, and really trying to get a uh, get a double play. Morin at second, Hilton at first, and it's ball one outside the Griffs. Devin Griffs hitting eighth for Stetson tonight. Sophomore left fielder with nine hits in his first 42 at bats. Six of his nine hits have gone for extra bases. Three quarters delivery from Short, and he misses outside again. All those, all those early swings in the first inning from Stetson, they've right. stayed patient here in the second. Yeah, FSU pitching so far, just not able to find the zone. Uh, short, definitely not doing what you want to do. And if you know you're coming out of a bullpen, your job is to really go in there and pound the strike zone. You gotta, you gotta give your team a chance uh, with this ground ball. Now, quickly behind three and up. First strike we've seen in a while. First, first out of the last 12. Let's see if Short can come on back with another one. Put in play. Smith has it. Snaps the throw across. Two outs. It's an easy play for Cam Smith with the runner going by. Never lost track of the baseball and gets a big second out. That's a very, very impressive play with the base runner running right in front of him. He's able to stay focused and field that ground ball. Really made the only play he could with how uh, slow that rolled to him. Um, can't get the guy second. Uh, so made the only play he could at first base. Gives the team an opportunity here with two outs, though. 
and short coming in and inducing that ground ball. That's what that, that three-quarter low, low arm angle will do for you, man. It kind of makes you pound that ball directly into the ground. Isaiah Barquette bats with two on and two out. In the top of the second. Barquette's ninth start of the season. Has three hits in his first 26 at bats. Transfer from NC State. Yeah, a lot of these transfers these days coming from some big programs. Tip of the cap to Coach Tremper for able to being able to pull some of these guys out of that portal from some of these bigger schools. That's on the outside. Two balls, two strikes. Not easy for a guy like Steve Trimper, who's been around college baseball as a head coach for more than two decades. You've got to adjust to this new era with the portal and NIL and all that stuff. You're absolutely right. Something these older coaches uh, who've been around for a while have to do. Can two in foul territory makes the catch. And step to set down the top third of the Florida State batting order. Jaime Ferrer, an early swing. Backhanded at third. Barquette, long throw and in time. So the Seminoles have not been shy in putting the bats off the shoulders early in this game. John Madunio has thrown seven pitches to get four outs. Yeah, like I said, he's always it all ground outs too, Chris. He he is a ground out producing machine. He is uh, like with that sinker slider, and you, and you give the the seminal these seminal bats are hot. They're they're good hitters, man. But he's able to get them to chop these balls into the ground, let his defense work for him. Drew Ferro swings at the first pitch, line drive and a base hit to left center field. Ferro peels around first, on his way to second, and in there with a one out double. Well, you know the nation's top offense wouldn't be silent for long. And Drew Ferro picks up his team leading 13th two bagger of 2024. Yeah, Drew, Drew's a, a phenomenal hitter and really, really started to come out of the shell a little bit here at, uh, at Florida State. I say that not like he hadn't been hitting this entire season, but man, he is putting the doubles to work. And that was a hustle double almost. I mean, that ball didn't quite sneak through the through the outfield. Left fielder for uh, the Hatters picks it up and, and puts a good throw on him, but Drew hustling all the way in there safe. And the first Florida State hit, Marco Dingis waves and misses at the big breaking ball from John Madunio. Yeah, Marco Dingis is a free swinging uh, guy, played, played just down the road at uh, Tallahassee Community College last year. And hit 383 against junior college pitching in his freshman season. That'll get the attention of the folks this way. Absolutely. He, he uh, I, head coach Brian Henry over there. I've had have some conversations with him about Marco Dinges, and he said, man, this guy is good. Light tower power, free swinger, but when he gets a hold of it, it goes. And he's done some big things so far this year. Unable to hold up on that check swing as Madunio has his first strikeout. Through that breaking ball, three straight pitches, and Dingus offered at all of them. So the Florida State designated hitter retired. Yeah, that free swing, that's one of those things. You, you're you're going to be a free swinger. You're definitely looking for that fastball, and uh, Madunio able to just throw three straight curveballs and get them chasing. Uh, two outs, it'll bring up the seminal first baseman, Daniel Cantu, senior from Jacksonville. Cantu, like most everybody who's swung the bat for Florida State this season, off to a nice start. Hitting 387 with six doubles, 11 RBIs, a transfer from South Florida. Yeah, he's really come around in his last eight to ten games. He's, he, he started the season off a little slow. It's not that he wasn't hitting the ball hard. He just kind of had bad luck and was hitting it right at people. Bounce towards the middle. Madunio knocks it down, and the underhand feed will end the inning. A Drew Ferro, one out double. Evan team was a little bit better. They won their first 23 games of the season. As the right hander, Noah Short, gets back to work. Came out of the bullpen, got the final two outs, and stranded two in scoring position back in the second. Yeah, Noah Short can just throw strikes right here. These, this, these Hatter teams, you see this. He's 
the uh, freshman Kyle Jones just not not ready for the sidearm uh, delivery from short. He's kind of just up there waving. Short starting him off with two breaking balls back to back. I wouldn't be surprised if he came back with it. And he does three quick pitches. Now Jones strikes out swinging. He's gone hitless in his first two at bats tonight, and it's the second punch out of the night for Florida State pitching. That's how you're going to be successful if you're Noah Short. You got to throw the ball in the zone. Just trust your stuff. If the team does hit it, they're probably going to hit it at a defender and let your defense work for you. You don't have to do it all by yourself. But uh, don't try to overpower the hitters. Just throw it in the zone and let your defense do your work for you. Lorenzo Miola will try again after a fly ball to right field his only time. Yeah, hit that ball about a mile in the air. James Tibbs battling the sun on his first at bat. Miola had seven hits in the three game series last weekend at Jacksonville. Stetson, the preseason pick to finish fourth in the A Sun this season. They will host last season's champ and this year's preseason favorite, Lipscomb, for three in Deland this weekend. Two balls, two strikes. A disappearing sweeper. Yeah, I think he's using the shadows to his advantage right now. Uh, these Stetson hitters seem to be losing the spin right in that shadow. So if he can just throw it for a strike, he's going to be okay. Didn't miss by much. Full count with Gio Cueto, the Wake Forest transfer, who's got Stetson only hit, waits on deck. Off the end of the bat, right back to short. Two down. And that's a professional job. And pitcher's fielding practice comes into play right there. They talk about an uncomfortable swing. Just trying to track that ball from Noah Short has been difficult enough for opposing hitters who have been batting. Below 200 against the right hander coming in, and he's set down now all four Stetson batters that he's faced in this one. Yeah, Noah Short with that sidearm delivery and that real slow sweeper of a curve. Um, also, you add in the factor that the shadows here, Dick Hauser, aren't probably helping the batters. But when you have a right handed sidearm guy, you have to have an approach, especially as a right handed hitter. And your approach can't be to pull the ball. You have to see it deep and try to shoot that ball in the right field. It's exactly what Gio Cueto did his last at bat. On uh, 2 0, oh, he takes just off the outside. Johan Dessera would be next. Strike by short. I think Gio Cueto was taken all the way on that one. But again, in a favorable count, you got a really good hitter, Gio Cueto. We'll see what he does here. He swings away and comes up empty. Full count. Cueto asking Matthew Schaefer if that was a strike. Yeah, I'd like to see that. That's a good hitter right there, getting his mentality right, making sure he's swinging at strikes, making sure he's not doing anything. Strike three called on the outside corner. Cueto didn't like New Jersey. Keeping that northeast to Deland pipeline alive as we've seen through Steve Trimper's eight seasons as the head coach. And that was just the 14th pitch through two plus innings thrown by Madunio. He's done a nice job keeping the ball on the ground against the nation's top offense one time through. Absolutely. Five of the six outs have been ground outs. And, and like you said, top offense. No, the Knowles have done it with uh, with some power so far in their first 18 games. A lot of homers, a lot of doubles, some triples, doing it with runners in scoring position. And you see Jackson West doing anything he could do, trying to bunt that ball to just to start this inning off with a base runner. Now West takes it the other way, and it's in there for a base hit. The second knock of the early innings for Florida State. And Jackson West earning his ninth start of the season tonight has his 11th hit in 27 at bats. Yeah, Jackson West is just one of those really good professional hitters. He's a young guy, but man, you see what he did right there. 
tries to bunt, steal a hit, third baseman back, just get on first base, and he, he doesn't do too much. Not trying to pull the ball, stays on it, gets the barrel under the ball just enough to shoot it into the outfield, which is what you got to do against Madunio. He's, he's, he's just getting these guys to get on top of every ball. Great, great job by Madunio so far, but really good piece of hitting by Jackson West. Now Alex Lodis, the Seminole shortstop, a transfer from North Florida, played in the A-Sun last season. A bouncer foul outside the bag at third. Now Lodis, who was a freshman All-American at North Florida last year, first team All-A-Sun, hit 306 with 16 homers, had a career-high six RBIs in a game against Stetson last year. Yeah, so he's seen this. He's seen these guys before. I bet that Green, you know, having a good game against the Stetson last year. You may be in a new uniform this year, but you still got the memories of what you're capable of, right? So I'm sure he's looking for quite a few more. Now to the backstop, and West will advance on the wild pitch. And Madunio with a, a rare over pitch right there. He missed by a lot on that one. I think he was just trying his hardest to rear back and throw one by Lodi's holds on to it a little too long and bounces it second time Florida State has had a runner in scoring position and Lodi spunts it foul I like the idea there by Lodi she got a runner on second so as a third baseman you have to keep your eye on the runner and I don't know if you noticed but Jackson West acted like he was going to steal just to keep the third baseman back and load East was trying to put that bunt for a base hit down. So really it's a really smart baseball play by the Seminole offense if they could pull it off. Maduno twirls around nobody's there to cover the bag at second and he wisely hung on to it. West led off the inning with a single took second on a wild pitch. Florida State has a golden opportunity to hit the run column first tonight. It's always good to have runners in scoring position and nobody out. And Lodi waves and misses at the breaking ball. Second strikeout for Madunio. It's a great pitch right there off the plate. Excellent job by Madunio to keep this pitch away from the barrel of Lodi's. But man, just a hard slider down in the zone. Even if Lodi's does make contact, I'm not sure much would have happened right there. That was a great pitch by the senior back to the top of the order Max Williams will try again they bounced out to first base leading off the seminal half of the first and that's air mailed into center field but West will stay put Kyle Jones the center fielder was playing shallow and was able to pounce on that loose ball quickly yeah Jackson I, I, Jackson's not a bad base runner Jack, uh, but he is uh, he is the catcher. Traditionally, your catchers aren't your speediest guys. So he didn't get up too quick and think about third base right there. But nothing in two on Max Williams. Now Williams, hometown of Ormond Beach, isn't all that far from Stetson's campus in Deland. Ormond Beach, just north of Daytona Beach, on the other side of the Sunshine State. About a four-hour bus ride, 250 miles or so for Stetson. Making the trip out to Tallahassee. Hatters will host the Seminoles in mid May for a midweek. I talked to Coach Tremper. He said they were able to come in after school yesterday. So, getting some good rest. It's always nice as a team for a midweek series. You come in night before, that way you can sleep in a little bit, get some rest, and prepare yourself for a big game, especially against a good team like Florida State. A Stetson team that already owns a midweek win over Florida. They've played UCF, Georgia, battle tested bunch. One ball, two strikes on Williams. Madunio rearing back and put a little extra on that one. 93. Like to see that. You know, you, you get ahead of a batter, especially 0 2. You can afford to throw one out of the zone a little bit, so. He rears back, leaves that one up just a little bit, but didn't miss by much. Breaking ball, bounced foul. Now Williams, who spent last season 
at Alabama. Hit 320 and, and limited at bats with the Crimson Tide. Spent the summer in the North Woods League. Where he hit 316 and was named a North Woods League All-Star. Yeah, using those wood bats, that's a great job by Max Williams. And close pitch just missed off the outside. Two balls, two strikes. Cam Smith, who ranks sixth in the country in batting average, waits on deck. Yeah, this is a tough part of the lineup. This is the second time through from Adunio, too, so it's always, always tough for a pitcher to you know, go once once a batter seen you pitch, it's a little tougher each time. You see Max Williams doing a good job of not swinging at bad pitches right here. He's doing it. He's, he's working Medunio for really the first time. Medunio has gone deep into a count like this. It's what you want to see from your leadoff hitter at any stage. Now, Medunio was chased in the fourth inning of his last start a week ago in Orlando against UCF, and Williams goes down swinging. Back-to-back -back strikeouts for Madunio and that leadoff base runner still at second now with two outs in the inning. Absolutely. It's a great job by Madunio. Stay in this at bat. Throws this pitch kind of up and out. Probably a borderline pitch. And Max Williams offers at it and just can't get a hold of it. But um, you, you like to see the senior maturity from Madunio to stay in that at bat and win the battle. Breaking ball in for strike one to Cam Smith. Smith saw just one pitch his first time and grounded out to short. This is that middle of the lineup for the Seminoles that's so dangerous with Smith. And Bounce to third. Long throw and Barquette beat Smith. Seminoles leave that leadoff base runner in scoring position. High school is a baseball powerhouse, has been for a long time. A lot of really big names, some, some big leaguers coming out of uh, Mosley in the past. And uh, Rowan's shown some really, some highlights so far this year of being that type of pitcher. He, uh, his, his first couple outings, he came in and he, he, he put some strikeouts in that were just extremely impressive. But he's been hit around a little bit and, you know, as a freshman would do, he just got to limit those walks. First pitch swing and a bouncer foul off the bat of Johan Dessera, the Stetson cleanup hitter. Will be followed by Labrador and Morin here in the sixth. And one thing I really like about watching Rowan is he's got some emotion on the mound. Very intense. We saw him pitch at Florida last Tuesday. Did let up a run in his inning of work, but struck out. Uh, three hitters in that inning against the Gators. In fact, as Desero skies this one to shallow right center field, Williams calling everybody off to make the catch. Among the 14 outs that Hudson Rowan has recorded this season, 11 of them have been strikeouts. Absolutely. So he misses a lot of bats. Well, he, he, he came in and struck out, he said, three in Florida, right? Yeah. And that was the middle of a very impressive Florida lineup, if I'm don't know if I recall correctly. I believe he, his first out that he came in and recorded was against Jack Caglione. Uh, not not a not a bad guy to strike out. It's pretty impressive. I, I'd put that towards the top of my resume. Pretty impressive, absolutely. Almost as impressive as Daniel Labrador's facial hair. Skied out to medium center field his only time. The Stetson designated hitter in his third year with the program after a year at St. John's River College at one time a Miami commit before opting to play junior college out of high school. Uh, fooled badly by that off speed pitch he falls behind one and two. And row on the lefty man that was a great off speed pitch down in the zone and Labrador just fully committed and couldn't hold back. I wonder if he can see his mustache in his periphery. <laughs> Maybe a little bit of it, like almost like whiskers. I mean, it's definitely a vibe with the puka shells and the, the mustache. I can see how it would have fit in in Miami. Absolutely. There's strike three looking. First punch out for Hudson Rowan. Hudson Rowan throws the old. 
whisper by the guy with the whiskers. Hard fastball on the corner. That takes care of Labrador. So two up, two down for the freshman Southpaw. Landon Morin swings at the first one. Long way to go for Jaime Ferrer, and it's out of play. Moran hit his first home run of the season in the conference opener Friday night in Jacksonville. Hit four last season and ranked fifth in the A Sun in on base percentage as a true freshman. On base average of 380 coming into this one. Not a bad table setter to have towards the top of the batting order. Scoreless in the top of the fourth. Stetson no runs on one hit. Florida State no runs on two hits. Knowles have left a couple of men on base. Yeah, so far, mm. pitching for uh, for the Stetson Hatters have been very, very impressive. And Florida State, despite a few walks, has not been far behind. They've done really, really well outside of a few base on balls. Hudson Rowan way ahead of Landon Morin. Got him looking over the outside edge. Back to all but three of his outs have been ground outs and the other three have been strikeouts. Yeah, no fly ball outs yet and Florida State has just two hits a Drew for O double back in the second and the Jackson West leadoff single to open up last inning. There's Jaime Ferrer the cleanup hitter. Ferrer's really, really good at hitting balls off the barrel, man. I, I, ever since he was a freshman, he's been extremely impressive here at Florida State. Had a game tying blast in the sixth inning Sunday to pull even with Notre Dame before the Seminoles went ahead for good in the seventh inning of that game. You talk about another, he's another guy that really truly is a free swinger. Doesn't, doesn't uh, I wouldn't consider him to be super patient, although he does have. Uh, seven walks so far this year, which is ahead of the pace he was last year. But he uh, he's a guy that likes to swing the bat. So if he gets a ball in the zone, I'd like to see him get a ball hard. And there you go, right there. He's, I had a good rip at that one. Yeah, he's he's not going to sit back there and take too many close close ones. Herrera with 22 career home runs, 99 career RBIs uh, coming into this one. Madunio's 2 2. And that hit him. Well, Ferrer gets plunked. And the Seminoles have a one out base runner in the home half of the fourth. That ball does not feel good. The ball hit him right in the kidneys. You never want to get hit there. It's, real, it's really the only soft part of the body. That a 92 mile an hour fastball just does not feel good in, but I may show an immediate, immediate pain. The fifth time he's been hit by a pitch this season. Not the, probably not the last time. He likes to crowd the plate a little bit, but he's also he's been hit by several pitches in his career. He's the ACC leader in hit by pitches last year. He knows how to wear them. Seminoles have a one out base runner in the home half of the fourth for Drew Ferro. The double to the alley in left center his only time. Going Drew that going way back. again. But this time it curls to Evan Griffs. Had some backspin to it and that's the second out. Yeah I think that one just a little bit off the end of the bat for Drew but you like to see him swinging the bat. He has figured something out that most of the other hitters on this team have, and he's got two balls in the air today. And the first fly ball out for Madunia. So two down. Here's Dingus, who struck out on three pitches. All three were breaking balls. Ferrer takes off. A fastball bounced towards the middle. That's the second baseman, Desera. He was on his way to cover the bag and makes the play for out number three. Oh, John, he was impressive in the fourth, retiring the side in order, picking up a couple of strikeouts. 
And faces 7 8 9 in the Hatter batting order. Scoreless game here in the top of the fifth. Jaden Hilton waves and misses at the first one from Rowan. Rowan's been impressive after uh, coming out of the pen, starting last inning. He's he's been ahead of every batter, throwing a lot of strikes, and he's thrown with some confidence. Throwing that ball, that fastball hard, throwing that curveball and that changeup down in the zone. And the Hatter's offense so far not able to barrel anything up against him. Hilton worked the walk his only time and strikes out on three pitches this time. It's three straight strikeouts for Hudson Rowan. Good morning, good afternoon, and good night. Absolutely. We talked about it that he's a he's a high strikeout guy. He's a guy that in uh, in five and a five and one third now struck out 14 batters. Very impressive for a freshman. Very impressive for any pitcher. It's ball one in tight to. Evan Griffiths. Griffiths came up with a two on one out was the first batter that Noah short faced in relief of Brady Lout, and he weakly bounced out to Cam Smith at third base. Yeah Rowan coming inside with two hard fastballs to Griffiths. Anytime a pitcher does that he's either trying to set you up with something soft away like that. Or he's trying to get you to hit one off the handle and something soft to your infield. Rowan doing a good job of locating everything right now. He's doing a very, very impressive job as a pitcher. Two balls, two strikes on the Stetson left fielder. These programs meeting for the first time since May of 2022 tonight. We mentioned that the long scheduled game between Stetson and Florida State last year was uh, canceled because of the weather here in Tallahassee. Good off speed pitch. It's another strikeout for Hudson Rowan. Great pitch right there by Hudson Rowan. Keep that ball down in the zone. Griffith swings and offers can't can't quite get the barrel on it. But even if he does what are you going to do with that right. That ball was buried. Great pitch by Rowan. Yeah, Chris, we talked about that. We, me and you were on the call for that we game, were. hanging around, and waiting our, for somebody our, to make a our call. Our producer, and... Alexandra DiCapua, was supposed to be our, our sideline reporter, and she had to come up and hang out in the press box, try and wait out the weather, and then they decided to call the game. They did. Yeah, it just didn't look like the lightning was going to quit. That sneaky thunderstorm in Tallahassee, man. You got some thunder and some lightning. And It'll it'll delay you immediately. So well, and, and the last time Stetson was here two years ago, the two teams had to sit around through about a, a 90 minute weather delay, and that game wound up going extra innings. Right. Jordan Carrion uh, won that game in the 12th with a walk off single for Florida State. Rolled the second routine play for Drew Ferro, and Hudson Rowan has set down all six hitters now against an extremely good offense, nation's top offense, and. He has induced almost all ground balls. One pop up out through four innings and uh, three strikeouts, and the rest just ground balls. The Seminole offense just cannot stop pounding this ball into the ground. Facing Daniel Cantu, and the first two have missed. It's Cantu West and Lodis. Seven, eight, nine in Florida State's batting order, trying to figure out the big six, six. 23 year old right hander from Upper Saddle River New Jersey. Now, a lot of times when you play these midweek games there's a great hit by Daniel can too. The lead off single opens the home half of the fifth. Great job again big first baseman not trying to do too much drives this ball in the hole for a single. Good piece of hitting by the first baseman. Yeah, a lot of times when you're when you're your coaching staff and you're playing these midweek games, it's, it's an opportunity to get a lot of arms and opportunity to throw and, and John Madunio making it tough on Tremper. I'm sure he's got some guys that he'd like to throw in the in the pin, but Madunio has been so efficient so far that he hadn't had the opportunity to even get a guy loose on. Second inning, Florida State has had a leadoff base runner. Only other time it happened was when Jackson West started the third with a single. So West trying to drop down a bunt that 
just drifted foul at the last moment his first time. You wonder if he's thinking bunt here with the runner at first base, nobody out. Yeah, one of those, one of the things about the seminal offense that has been so impressive, you got Jackson West, who is a uh, left handed hitting catcher, who pretty much gets the nod against right handed pitching. And then, uh, McGuire Holbrook, your, your, your right handed hitting catcher, who gets the nod against left handed pitching. And they've both been very interchangeable so far this season. You look at their stats, and they're both very, very impressive. Um, Jackson West has his average up to 407. His on base percentage is through the roof. Guy always finds a way on base. And uh, not to mention, he's a heck of a defender behind the plate. Yeah, you know, West started one of the games last weekend against Notre Dame. Holbrook got the starting nod in the other two, but it's West who starts at catcher tonight. Squares to bunt and snap throw to first. If it was on target, Cantu would have been a dead duck over there, but instead he's able to get back ahead of the tag from Moran, and now the count's level on West. Two balls, two strikes. Yeah, Jackson West uh, bunting through that ball as a as a base runner. That's that's a uh, that's a tough situation as a catcher. If the if the batter ever bunts through it, you always throw behind the runner. You, you got a shot because that guy's going to be off the bag expecting that ball to get down. High bouncer to second. Desera. Well, now they'll say pitch clock violation. Up to pitch clock violation, and that might wipe away. A 4 6 3 double play. It would have been interesting to see if the relay would have gotten West at first, but that was a, a tailor made ground ball. And, and of course, Steve Trimper is up out of the visiting dugout asking for an extra explanation from Matthew Schaefer, the plate umpire. But you don't see that often where a ball's put in play and it's essentially blown dead the second it's fielded. Absolutely. And that was a golden opportunity for the. Uh, the Hatters to get out of a, a, a leadoff runner and nobody out. Bare minimum, you're getting the lead runner right there, and you still only got a guy at first. But now, you give a guy like Jackson West another opportunity to hit. Um, a, as a hitter, you're, you're always looking for that extra opportunity. Right now, he's got it, man. I, I haven't seen that one yet, but that's one of those new rules that wasn't around when I was playing. Full count pitch, runner takes off, bouncing ball, diving, stop. Moran steps on the bag for the first out. Cantu does advance to second, but an outstanding play made by Landon Moran down at first base, or else the Seminoles are looking at runners at the corners, nobody out. Yeah, it was a, again, a good piece of hitting by Jackson West, pulls the ball behind the runner. Cantu was taken off on the full count, and a phenomenal play by the first baseman. To, Stop that ball and get at least an out. That ball makes it down the line. You're looking at second and third with nobody out. Seminoles 0 for 5 tonight with men in scoring position. Alex Lodis fouls away the first pitch he sees. He was a strikeout victim, his only time back in the home half of the third. First team all A Sun in Stetson's conference last year as a member of the North Florida Ospreys. Lodi's another one of these guys that got off to a, a bit of a slow start, but has really come around lately. Had a heck of a week last week and put up some big numbers and get that average up. He's he's a he's a staple at shortstop, very good defender, and and honestly a phenomenal hitter. Sophomore from St. Augustine will try and battle back. He trails nothing in two. Just got a piece of the big breaking ball. That's a good pitch again by Medunio, just keeping that breaking ball down and away, down and away. But that's too close for a guy like Lodis to take it. So you have to swing, got to try to spoil the pitch. Hope that uh, Medunio makes a makes a rare mistake. You know. You wonder if Medunio is confident enough to bounce the breaking ball with the runner at second and one out. He does, and it's blocked. It's a great pitch, man. Since the pitcher's pitch, you called it. Bounce the breaking ball, try to get the batter to chase. Shows he's got a lot of trust in his catcher back there to block that ball up with a runner on second. One, two. I, I think about going back to it. See if you can get a chase. Absolutely. Max Williams in the top of the order waits on deck. Two strike pitch. 
Another foul ball off the bat of Lodis. Nuno does do it. Doesn't quite bounce that ball, but he definitely keeps that ball down in the zone. Lodis getting a little bit closer to finding that barrel, but Madunio just absolute beast with his location today. He is locating everything correctly. One, two. Swing and a miss into the opposite batter's box. Cueto completes the strikeout, and he did go back to that big Uncle Charlie, and he buried it as he strikes out Lodis for a second time tonight. Yeah, he just stayed steady with that breaking ball, and he threw that ball down and away, low in the zone. I mean, not even in the zone. He bounced the ball. Lodis just can't hold back, chases the bad pitch, and tip of the cap to Cueto for not only blocking that ball, but coming up immediately, looking at the runner at second, making sure he's not running, taking his time, making a great throw down the first base for the out. Well, Max Williams will see John Madunio for a third time tonight. The ground out and a strikeout for the sophomore center fielder in his first two trips. Fouls away the first pitch. See Williams being a little bit more aggressive. He's seen this guy a couple times now. That's a fastball. He just misses. But Madunio again, man, really doing a good job of keeping this ball just outside of the, the reach of the hitter's barrels. Off speed pitch misses. Almost the entire infield engulfed in shadows at this juncture of the night. Uh, a five o'clock local start. Yeah, probably the toughest right now for the first baseman, second baseman, and uh, right fielder. Up the middle, stopped by the shortstop Miola from shallow center. How about the dig from Moran? Oh, Stetson makes another dazzling play on the Seminole squad. So among the 20 hitters he's retired this year, now 15 of them by way of the punch out. That's pretty impressive. Yeah, it tells you what kind of stuff this guy has. I'll tell you what, I was watching him, watching him pitch right now. You know, you, you, one thing you notice about him is uh, as, a, as a lefty facing righties, it's always tough. Right-handers usually hit left-handers left better. But Rowan does a good job of hiding his pitches. I don't know if you watch him, but he keeps the ball in the glove a little bit longer than most guys when during his windup. Watch, watch his, watch his action here. He keeps the ball in the glove and hides that, and then he comes out and just whips that fastball by the hitter. Facing the top third of Stetson's batting order in the sixth inning, only one hit for the Hatters. It was a Gio Cueto two-out single way back in the first in a midweek pitchers duel, which you don't often hear around college baseball. Not usually it's a a bullpen fest. You got everybody's thrown to the wolves and everybody's swinging the bat. Not today. Today has been very impressive from the mound. Kyle Jones, the true freshman from Athens, Georgia, riding an eight game hit streak and works a leadoff walk to open up the Stetson half of the sixth. And Rowan, the freshman, showing a little bit of, I wouldn't call it fatigue, but showing a little bit of, maybe say, immaturity there. He's a, he is a freshman. You see Jackson West going out to settle him down. You definitely don't want to walk the leadoff hitter, especially in college, especially in a game like this, 0-0. Zero zero. Anytime the leadoff hitter makes it to first base, it's always a, uh, a recipe for a potential run. Well, and keep an eye on Stetson base runners. They haven't had a whole lot of them in this game, but uh, the Hatters rank 21st in the country with 40 stolen bases as a team. And Kyle Jones over there at first base is second on the club with eight stolen bases and nine tries. It looks like Joe Charles warming up in the Florida State bullpen. Big junior right hander. Hudson Rowan already the third pitcher used by Link Jarrett tonight. And the starter Brady Lauk was chased in the second. And Noah Short came on, did a nice job. Got five outs. 
which is a little more typical for your. You like to see a lot of usually see a lot of arms on a weekday start. See Jackson West going out to delay and stall a little quicker to the plate. Leadoff batter for Stetson's on first base. You know he's a fast runner. You know he's going to try to steal at some point during this at bat. So you want Joe Charles, the guy that can be a little quicker to the plate, try to stimmy that. Lorenzo Miola squares the bunt. Takes ball one from Joe Charles. Miola's gone hitless in two at bats tonight with a fly ball to right field and a bouncer back to the pitcher. It's a good pitch right there by Joe Tar Charles. Starts him off with a little slider, hard slider away, and then brings that fastball right back in, back in on the hands. You see uh, Cam Smith. Playing in a little bit at third base. Trying to get this double play. Rolled towards the middle and through. This is the second hit tonight for Stetson. And the Hatters have something brewing in the top of the sixth with two on and nobody out. Ball looked like it almost hit Charles. Good piece of hitting right there by Miola. 1-1 one, one again, not trying to do too much. Pulls the hands in, gets the barrel. Looks like it did graze off of Charles' backside. So now the Hatters have two on, nobody out for the North, uh, the Wake Forest transfer, Gio Cueto. Pulls back the bunt attempt, takes the breaking ball low. Man, in a game like this, nothing, nothing you, you expect. Even the three hole hitter is going to get the bunt call with man on first and second, nobody out. You got to get this guy to third base any way you can. You see Charles back to back breaking balls, trying to get Cueto to make a mistake. Uh, Cueto has been Stetson's best hitter this year in these spots. He's hitting 378 with runners in scoring position, leads the club with 23 RBIs. As he cuts through the high fastball from Joe Charles. Gets the green light there. No bunt for him on 2-0. A walk and a single have opened up the top of the sixth. Stetson trying to strike first in Tallahassee. As Cueto takes over the outside edge. Two and two. So after the two breaking balls when Cueto had the bunt sign on. Those both missed. But Charles has come back with consecutive heaters. Absolutely. Here's the 2 2. Check swing. He went around. All right, big pin, the first base umpire rings up Cueto. That is a massive first out for Florida State in the top of the sixth. You can't spot this any better. That hard, hard breaking ball. Looks like a fastball about three quarters of the way, and this drops out of the zone. And Cueto just can't hold up. Really, really good job by catcher Jackson West to block that ball up and keep those runners on first and second. Now it's the cleanup hitter, Johan Dessera. And he takes an off speed pitch for strike one. Dessera has gone hitless in his two at bats with a strikeout and a flyout. Dessera, a guy that can do some damage, though. 700 slugging percentage. Oh, it, into the it hits him, but he swung at it. That's how much movement that breaking ball had from Joe Charles. Yeah, that ball. That ball looks like a fastball almost all the way. It's hard to pick up that spin from Joe Charles, and he is he's getting these sw these hitters swinging and missing by a lot. Go to lined in the shallow center field. Williams charging and makes the catch. Two outs. So Charles, after giving up the single with a runner on first and uh, Coming in, getting a big strikeout and a quick fly out to get two outs. And that's the way the game's gone for both teams just about so far. Anytime somebody's showing any kind of action of maybe scooting a run across. Partner, we lost the stash for the night. Daniel Labrador will be pinch hit for here by Mike Handel, the senior reserve outfielder. Steve Tripper is not messing around. He wants to strike with this opportunity. There were two on with nobody out. The three, four hitters couldn't get the job done. And Mike Handel comes into the game and pinch hits in this big spot. 
So we go from handlebar mustache to yeah. Mike Handle. <laughs> you don't suppose they, they figured all of that out beforehand? I don't know. Here comes Link Jarrett. Link's going to play the matchup here. I like. I like the uh, I like the way this is going, man. My, it, you see these two veteran coaches. Last year, but much like most of the returners from the 2023 club, everybody's gotten better. Absolutely. I'll tell you what. I was talking to Adam Ferro. That's Drew Ferro's dad a little earlier today, and he said this. What's been very impressive, uh, he's been out to several practices. He said what's been very impressive is how much harder and how much better some of these pitchers have been year to year from last year to this year. And, and Oxford's no, no uh, exception there. Well, even with the pitching change, Steve Trimper is going to stick with Mike Handel, who's hitting 200 on the season. Transfer from Fairfield out of the Metro Atlantic Athletic Conference. Handel last season at Fairfield was second team all conference at 314 with eight homers and 46 batted in. Yeah, Oxford's a hard thrown lefty. He's going to be upper 80s, low 90s with his fastball. He's got a good change up and a good off speed, good, uh, good curveball. You see Coach Jarrett playing the matchup. Lefty on lefty is always tough, especially especially in this ballpark with those shadows this time of day. But Coach Tremper putting a lot of trust in Mr. Handel down there. Half swing, the appeal down to third, no swing. Vincent Cration, the third base umpire on a, a borderline check swing. Says Handel held up. Two balls, one strike. Stetson had two on with nobody out. Cueto struck out against Joe Charles. Johan Desira popped out to shallow center. Now the pinch hitter Mike Handel on a 2-1 into shallow center field. Williams charging. He makes the catch. And Stetson Lee. Impressive. Nine ground outs, four strikeouts, only three hits. And I don't think we've seen a runner from either team hit third base today. It's been very, very impressive. Yeah, Stetson had two in scoring position after the back-to-back -back walks in the second, but that, that's as far as anybody's gotten to, to scoring a run in this game. Of course, Florida State with 32 home runs as a team with one swing of the bat, and they can easily break this scoreless tie. And yeah, Coppersmith coming into the trenches facing 2-3-4 for the uh, Florida State Seminoles. Cam Smith working ahead of them, though, but Cam Smith um, on a tear. Smith in the air to right field. Hilton chasing out near the wall. It's a foul ball. Oh, it had close to home run distance. Not sure it would have had the height to clear that a tall wall in right field up against the foul pole, but Smith buries the two strike pitch into the right field corner. It winds up in the Florida State bullpen, and they'll try it again at one ball, two strikes. You see the animals of Section B, Florida State Staples, getting real loud for Cam Smith. Yeah, Cam Smith was just real close to a six double of the year right there, and first hit of the night, but through 18 games, already 38 hits for the young man. He's gone hitless with a pair of ground outs tonight. As he sends a slow bouncer to third, Barquette charging. And takes care of his opposite number for out number one. Yeah, Cam Smith just seems to be out in front of everything right now. It's his third ground ball, kind of a rollover ground ball, all three times on the left side of the infield. It's all you can do right there with two strikes, just fight through it, but I'll bet Cam Smith's shown a little bit of frustration. That's the first time he's been hadn't hit a ball hard in a long time. One out for James Tibbs. Tibbs has gone hitless in his two at bats tonight with a pair of ground outs. Yeah, normally super patient. Tibbs led the team last year in walks, leading the team this year in, in free passes, and swung at the first two pitches he saw the night for two ground outs. Showing a little bit more patience here. Ball three to Tibbs. He had five hits, three RBIs against Notre Dame pitching here over the weekend. Played in the Cape Cod last summer, was an all-star, also won the Cape Cod Home Run Derby. 
Taking all the way, it's three and one. And that home run derby title shouldn't come as a surprise to anybody around these parts. We've seen James Tibbs launch some uh, majestic home runs in his seminal career. Full count. Yeah, he's, he's been impressive uh, throughout his career, but he's been impressive so far this year as well. Eight home runs, 32 RBIs. This one just catching the corner. I think James Tibbs thought it was a little bit low. Tibbs skies the full count pitch foul. I always say, man, it's just a really, really good pitch. But 3-1, you're looking for something you can drive. And even if you, even if the umpire calls that ball 3-1 a strike, it's uh, it's probably not something you're going to hit very hard or very far. So you want to let the guy make some mistakes. And Cueto tosses aside the mask, but doesn't have a play. So still a full count on Tibbs. Jaime Ferrer. The seminal cleanup hitter waits on deck. Florida State, no runs on three hits. They've left four on base. John Madunio, the Rutgers transfer, pitched five scoreless to open things up for Stetson. Now it's in the hands of Zane Coppersmith. Full count pitch. Swung on, hit in the air, straight away center field. Struck well. Jones back. And on the warning track, he makes the catch. Yeah, James Tibbs. 3-2, fastball up in the zone. Does a phenomenal job of getting the barrel of this ball. Just gets under it. And on a chilly night in Tallahassee, that ball doesn't quite fly out as much as it has been so far this year. Well, Tibbs just got under it. Copper Smith takes care of Smith and Tibbs. Now Jaime Ferrer takes ball one. Ferrer was hit by a pitch for a fifth time this season. His last time up. That one comes high and tight. Yeah, Jaime Ferrer is a tough kid and a tough out. In this the air to straightaway up. center field. Jones out near the wall makes the catch. A couple deep flow. Trimper has gone into his bench again. It's Juan De La Cruz. De La Cruz. Very baseball name right there. Oh no, that's number 10. No, oh, so it is it is Moran here. I'm sorry. All good. You said the shadows were a problem. Yeah, so. I, could. I, th I saw the zero on his back. I thought we had a pinch hitter. <laughs> that's my fault. And Moran has made a couple of outstanding plays at first base has walked and struck out in two plate appearances tonight. Takes a big hack right there on the Brendan Oxford fastball. Moran Hilton and Griffiths. Six seven eight scheduled for Stetson in the top of the seventh. And there's an outside corner strike one and two. And we talked about lefty on lefty matchups and Brennan Oxford able to mix the speeds up, but also able to locate all his pitches. So it makes it even tougher. Check swing. Yes, he did. Vincent Cration said he went around down at third base. And that's the first strikeout for Brennan Oxford. Yeah, Oxford, that low sweeping slider. He pointed immediately. He knew he knew Moran had committed. Moran didn't want to believe it. Jackson West with a tag and Quick out right there. Well, Link Jarrett has already used five pitchers tonight, and is that you know any time like you said it any time you're playing inside the conference it's going to be a tough matchup. Jaden Hilton fooled by the first pitch breaking ball from John Abraham. I think Jaden Hilton is sitting dead red looking for that first pitch fastball. That's that's what a good hitter does in a in a with a new pitcher. But Florida State able to keep these guys off balance thus far. Hilton has walked and struck out in a pair of plate appearances tonight. He's on the ace on all freshman team last year. He's got some power, eight home runs in his first season, a couple this year, and he comes up empty. One ball, two strikes. His older brother, Brandon, is a fifth year senior on the team. And he's actually taller than Jaden, who stands at 6'5. Brandon is 6'7. Swing and a miss as it kicks away from West. And he completes the strikeout. Four straight breaking balls from Abraham to Jaden Hilton right there. And Jaden Hilton really not even close to any of them. Um, 
phenomenal job by Jackson West to block that dirt ball and uh, get up and throw him out. Logan Hughes will pinch hit here for Evan Griffiths. Hughes, the true freshman from DeLand, had five hits, three doubles over the weekend at Jacksonville. I had a coach that uh, I didn't play for him, but I played against him enough. I, I got to know him really well, and he, uh, anytime you struck out, on a on a dirt ball a, a dirt ball breaking ball he would say tough luck partner took a bad hop on you <laughs> well, Logan Hughes one of seven true freshmen on this 2024 Stetson ball club Hatters returned 24 players from a 35 win team last season 14 newcomers seven freshmen seven transfers a 2 0 to Hughes. Two and one. We've seen a lot of swings and misses tonight. That strikeout of Hilton was the tenth among six different Florida State arms. Yeah, very odd night for the offense here at Florida State, but pretty standard night for the pitching staff. They are uh, they're putting up some big numbers outside of a few free passes that they gave up during the game. Their uh, their strikeout numbers have been pretty pretty par for the course. 2-2 to Hughes, and the breaking ball drops in for strike three. Florida for the seventh. Zane Coppersmith back out for a second inning of work. Drew Farrow leads off and fouls back the first pitch. Drew Farrow with a big first pitch hack right there. I think he was trying to put that first run on the board. Farrow, Dingus, and Cantu, 5-6-7 in the Seminole batting order. Florida State is strung together just Three hits through the first six innings. Two of the Seminoles three hits though coming from Drew Ferro and Daniel Cantu. And Ferro had a double back in the second. Popped out to left field his last time. Drew Ferro the lone switch hitter on this FSU team this year. All three plate appearances have been from that left hand side tonight. Just off the outside full count. And Ferro, who saw his seven game hitting streak. Come to an end Saturday against Notre Dame. He started a new one tonight with that double his first time up. Back in the second. Ferro doing a good job of spoiling a good pitch right there by Coppersmith. A little up in the zone. Good, good pitcher's pitch, though. Kind of trying to get him to blow it by him right there with strike three, but Drew's staying on top of that one. Kyle Jones drifting to his right and puts away out number one in the Florida State half of the seventh. So Ferro flies out, one down. Marco Dingis has gone hitless in two at bats tonight. Strikeout and a ground out, both of those trips against the starter John Madunio, who pitched five innings of shutout baseball tonight for Stetson. And with that type of performance, probably not available for the weekend, but you might have to think about putting him in your weekend rotation. Well, he was very efficient, only threw 55, 56 pitches. I mean, maybe Sunday, a yeah. couple innings of relief if you need him. You got him. He should be ready. That's that's a you know just that's like a long bullpen day. So. It's Tuesday. He may be ready by Sunday. Copper Smith misses with ball three to Digis. I was just about to say one of the real highlights for the Stetson Hatters is they have not walked anybody outside of Jaime for out, outside of hitting Jaime Ferrer earlier this game. They have not had one walk. Dingus 3-1. This is the kind of count you want this guy in. He can really swing it. So if he gets a fastball here. He is not taken. <laughs> he was Did right you on see that, that one. swing right there. Full count on the Florida State designated hitter. He had a 10 game hitting streak snapped over the weekend against Notre Dame. Full count pitch. Off the outside. That's the first walk issued by Stetson pitching tonight. And the Seminoles have a one out base runner in the seventh. 
Looks like we're going to see a pinch runner here for Marco Denges. Jordan Williams, our reserve outfielder for Florida State. So to get a little more speed over there at first base. Yeah, with one out. Really, as a as a team, you really got to get this guy to second base with Daniel Cantu up. Cantu's been super hot lately. He's been uh, he's been hitting the ball really really well. So you gotta you gotta think he's going to continue to hit the ball well. But you want him to do that with a runner in scoring position. So speeding up at first base is the Seminoles probably looking for a uh, you're going to look for Williams to take off in a a breaking ball count here. I'd look for something the first three pitches. Cantu singled his last time in the fifth. One for two tonight. That fifth inning single off the bat of Daniel Cantu extended his hitting streak to seven games. Had five hits here over the weekend against Notre Dame. Williams over at first base with good speed. Four stolen bags. Has not been caught this year. Came back in standing up right there. Umpire saying, hey man. You can't push on the first baseman like that. I don't think you did it intentionally, but Williams takes off, and that's either a hit by pitch or a foul ball. That ball up and in on Cantu. I think it's the knob of his bat. Has to have because if it hit him in the hand, you'd see him really getting after it. Well, no, nobody's sending Williams back to first base. Stetson's asking for an explanation, and now they're telling Williams to go back. And it took a while for Matthew Schaefer to make a ruling there. But yeah, Williams it is a foul ball. And Williams, I believe, had that, I believe Williams had that ball stolen or had that bag stolen the entire way. But the ball hitting off the knob of Cantu's bat, it looks like. Let's see where this hits the bat. Or hard to say. He Cantu saying it didn't hit him. Let's see where this. I think maybe the catcher just missed. Cantu get the green light on the first pitch and barrel one up right here. So Van Dyke inherits a runner at first base. He also inherits a one ball, one strike count. Had that mini delay figuring out what happened on the 1 0 pitch, and Stetson stretched out the delay by making a pitching change. And immediately, with two quick moves <laughs> over to first base. You're talking about the human rain delay, and, yeah. and here we are <laughs> in a game that has gone so quickly through six and a half innings. The Seminole faithful. Williams takes off. Cueto's throw out of the glove. Williams has swiped his fifth bag of the year. It would have been interesting if Miola held on to the baseball. It was not a good throw from Cueto, but it wound up on the second base side of the bag. Absolutely. Miola, I mean, doing a good job getting that ball on the run, and the ball definitely beat Williams there. I'll tell you what, Van Dyke's quick to the plate because Williams didn't get a horrible jump, but that ball's real quick to the plate. Can too, taking a half too. Florida State trying to cash in. They've gone hitless in 10 at bats tonight with men on base. 0 for 7 with runners in scoring position. Which is odd. I mean, that, you know, at this point in the game, usually Florida State's had 15, 16, 20 at bats with runners in scoring position. Popped up. Not to mention a few hits. play. A one out walk issued to Marco Dingis. And then Link Jarrett replaced him with the speedster Jordan Williams, who will score from second base on just about any base hit to the outfield. Another two strike pitch to Cantu. Swing and a miss. Tied him up with an inside fastball. Two down. Van Dyke with a really good fastball in on the hands of Cantu. Cantu just swings right through it. It doesn't look like Cantu's trying to do too much, but I do believe Cantu is looking off speed, and that ball just beat him. 
So two outs it'll be up to Jackson West the catcher who singled his first time and was robbed of a base hit by Landon Murrin the first baseman on an outstanding play his last time the breaking ball drops over the outside for strike one. Yeah, this is a scenario where you put Jackson West to the screws man see what he can do. It's a situation where the team needs a run you got a runner in scoring position two outs two out, two out hits win ball games as they say. West the other way drifting into foul territory and that's where it lands. And tried to inside out that one and almost had a chance to maybe plop it to the right of the chalk. Instead it's nothing in two. Yeah doing doing that now I'd like to see that approach right there you're trying to shoot this ball in the in the left field just over the third baseman now you got two strikes on you, you got to be a tough out. He's seen both pitches and seen the fastball seen the curveball. Let's see what Jackson West can, can do right here. Stays alive. It was a bit tardy on the nothing and two fastball from Van Dyke. Yeah, you see him really spreading out just trying to have a good two strike approach right there. I don't know if he's choking up a little bit. We we used to call the two two strike approach the, the choke and poke. Not trying to do too much literally just trying to put it in play and get this run in. Maybe a little choke. Low and inside it almost hit Jackson West and no swing on the appeal. We saw that happen with a Stetson batter earlier in the game on a breaking ball that it came low and inside and there was a full swing. <laughs> full swing. West able to elude the nothing and two pitch. Now it's one ball two strikes. Van Dyke delivers. And it's bounced to first, stopped by Moran. He makes another terrific play and keeps this game scoreless. Florida on the flip side, you got five strikeouts and only one walk from the Stetson Hatters pitching staff. So very impressive on both sides for the mound for both both teams on the mound today. Isaiah Barquette facing John Abraham of Florida State. Abraham. Came on in relief in the seventh inning, got the final two outs of the frame. Facing Barquette, Jones, and Miola. 9 1 and 2 in the Hatter batting order. Breaking ball lifted the opposite way. Tibbs drifting over. One out. Ball hit fairly well by Barquette right there, but Tibbs able to make it look easy. Great pitch right there by. John Abraham. Tell you what, the cold air tonight is a little chilly in Tallahassee, and cold air is keeping the ball up in the air. It's been a handful of balls hit very, very well tonight, just not able to travel in this cold air. Kyle Jones in the batter's box for a fourth time tonight. His eight game hitting streak is in some jeopardy. He's gone 0 for 2 with the walk. No, no. Slow breaking ball one ball one strike. Among the seven freshmen that Stetson has on this 24 club Jones says uh, stood out the most. And he has earned that everyday leadoff spot the starting center fielder for Stetson. No. Mentioned big weekend series looming not only for Florida State going to Clemson but also for Stetson against the preseason favorite in the Atlantic Sun Hatters will welcome in Lipscomb the Bisons. For a three game set and Jones is plunked. Stetson has a one out base runner in the eighth and it's the eighth time already this year that Kyle Jones has been hit by a pitch. Yeah talking with coach Tremper a little bit before the game we had a we had a conversation about the freshman Jones he said one thing he really really appreciates about him is he has a veteran approach at the plate. And like you said, he's worked his way into an everyday starter as, as, as a leadoff hitter on a very good Stetson team. So he's been very impressive as a freshman. Jones has some speed over there. Eight stolen bases. He's only been caught stealing once. Here's Lorenzo Miola, one for three tonight. Had a single his last time up in the sixth inning. And here comes Micah Posey, the Florida State pitching coach. 
So Seminoles they've used six pitchers tonight and imagine they're not done yet. Right. And you wonder if this is to buy some time for the home bullpen to get going. Yeah, I think Coach Mike Oposey, you can always tell by the speed of their walk. If they're walking a little fast, they're probably uh, just going out to calm them down. If they're walking a little bit slow, you're going to put some arms in the, you're going to give the arms in the bullpen an opportunity to get loose. Yeah, Paris Southpaw is heating up down there. Carson Dorsey on your right. Connor Holtz, the junior Southpaw, on the left hand side of your split screen. Double box. As we call it. Mentioned Stetson. Just one for seven with runners on base tonight. Florida State's gotten hitless in 12 at bats with men on base. And we'll see who can break through first on a dominant pitching night for both the Hatters and the Seminoles. Coach Michael Posey going out there just to calm his pitcher down and get him, get him back. Throw strikes, man. This, this Hatters team has struggled to barrel the ball up. They're, you know, if you let them hit, they're going to ground out. Runner takes off, throw to second, and he slid by the bag. Two outs. Oh, Kyle Jones had second base stolen, but a little too much momentum on the slide. And Drew Ferro slapped down the tag. And Jones gets an outstanding jump right here on the curveball. Jackson West struggles to get out of this glove a little bit, but throws a dart. And Drew Ferro with the wherewithal to keep the tag down for that exact scenario. Just slides past the back. You see the disappointment oh, no. in Jones's face. That's going to become a meme. Yeah, it takes the <laughs> it takes the wind out of your sails a little bit, doesn't it? You know, you, you, you're on there with one out. You got an opportunity to be on second with one out, and all of a sudden there's nobody on. And there's two outs. Well, the frustration from Jones caught stealing for just the second time this year, and that's a four-pitch walk to Miola. So a two-out base runner for Stetson, and Gio Cueto, who has one of the two hatter hits tonight, will bat for a fourth time. All the way back in the first inning. It's a 2 0 fastball and shoots it in the right. One of the harder hit balls of the day, actually. It struck out twice since then, though. Breaking ball for strike one. You wonder if Miola gives it a try. He's got seven stolen bases, been caught just once this year. Yeah, similar stats. Miola obviously a good runner. Coach Tremper said they're going to be aggressive on the base pass. They're really, really, they're, uh, they've obviously they've stolen 40 times already this season, but they really work hard at that in their practices. They work hard on getting reads off the pitchers and trying to develop the instinct of the base runner. Top 20 in the country is Stetson in stolen bases as a team. Check in on Miola over at first base. No, Gio Cueto is last time up. It was probably Stetson's best opportunity to scratch across a run. They had two on, nobody out. Cueto wound up strucking out, and then the next two hitters barreled up a couple of routine fly balls to straightaway center. Yeah, definitely is Stetson's best opportunity. Rolled to short. Lodis with the flip. Inning over. Hit by pitch and a walk, but nothing across. Force the chip on their shoulder following a 23 and 31 campaign last year. Absolutely, and they're chasing. They're chasing. Well, they're trying to. Already, they're going to be better than they were last year. We already seen every part of that, but man, you know, after after what a disappointing last year. What a start they've been able to pull off so far, you know. And even even now, like they're, you, you, you look at how good Florida State's hitting has been, and and they've been they've been stifled a little bit this year or this game, but um, it, it hadn't stopped the pitching from being just as outstanding. 
Well, they got a three ball no strike count here against Alex Lodis to open up the bottom of the eighth facing Ty Van Dyke. And that grazes the inside edge. Van Dyke inherited a base runner also inherited a one ball one strike count last inning got the final two outs of the seventh. Lodis didn't quite like that one but. Upstairs able to draw the walk anyway. Lead off base runner for Florida State to open the home half of the eighth. Yeah, and that rolls the lineup back to the top. And this is the fourth time through the line. Top of the order. Max Williams has gone hitless in three at bats. Corner infielders in. Williams squares. Gets down the bunt. Cueto tosses to second in time. Very close play down there at second base. And Lodis is called out. I'll tell you what, that is an outstanding play by Gio Cueto to pop out there and grab that ball and make that play second base. Max Williams trying to get that bunt towards first base right there. That's the only infielder that was was not playing in. Anything back to the one on, one out for Cam Smith. And Smith came into the day sixth in the country in batting average. With a 487 clip. And George's Charlie Condon leads the country at 521 in the batting average department. Inside corner, one ball, one strike on Smith, who's grounded out three times in three trips. Yeah, Cam Smith's rolled over three balls today, which is rare for him because he's such a good hitter this year, staying inside the ball and driving at the right field. Check on Williams over at first base, who's Stolen a pair of bags has not been caught. Throwback from the first baseman and the pitcher was dropped in the animals of section B and let him know about it. Line to left center field. There's a base hit for Cam Smith. Williams stumbles around second. He'll get to third. And the Seminoles have him at the corners with one out in the eighth. Yeah, Ty Van Dyke leaves this ball up in the zone. And like I said, man, Cam Smith rolled over his first three at bats today, but stays right through the middle of this ball. Doesn't try to do too much. Shoots it right into the outfield. Very hard hit ball to center field. Is able to get Max Williams first to third. Even with the stumble, he made it to third with no throw. And we see our first, this is our first guy at third base all day for Florida State. Stetson had runners at second and third way back in the second. Oh. And couldn't cash in. It's been a while. Now you got the. Tibbs had a bug fly into his eye. <laughs> right well, as Van Dyke was about to come on home. I was going to say, James Tibbs uh, has hit some ball. He hit a ball hard his last at bat. Hit one to the warning track in, in right center. Well, and that'll do in a spot like this. Less than two outs. Yeah. He's a guy that can to drive. the outfield. Absolutely. Situational hitting right here. The breaking ball comes low and inside. Cueto keeps it put. And this is a great matchup right here. You, you got Ty Van Dyke, the, the junior pitcher. He's he's trying to throw the ball down in the zone. He's doing what he's supposed to do. He's trying to get Tibbs to ground into a double play to end this inning without that run scoring. In the air to center field. Plenty deep. Jones has it. Williams tags. Florida State breaks the scoreless tie in the eighth. Tibbs drives this ball to center field. That ball actually carried a little bit. That ball got all the way to the warning track, way out there in deep center. And uh, I don't think the center fielder definitely didn't think he had a throw to, to home. But great piece of base running by Cam Smith at first base to tag up and take second base. Now you got Jaime Ferrer, who's you know single away from driving in a second run for Florida State. Cam Smith doing a good job. Team Kyle leading Jones, 33rd RBI of the season for Tibbs, and like you said, Smith wisely took second. Kyle Jones, I just don't think he expected Smith to be tagging up right there, kind of. Ease that throw back in and Smith taking advantage of, of the miscue. There's Jaime Ferrer. 
We have the chance to add on to this one nothing lead. One ball one strike on the Florida State cleanup hitter who's gone 0 for 2 with the hit by pitch. The Seminoles striking for the game's first run here in the eighth inning and they've done it without the benefit of the doubt of a, a base hit with men in scoring position 0 That's for right. 9 tonight. That's right. With runners at second or third base. Jaime Ferrer also tattooed his last swing uh, his last at bat drove a ball all the way out to the wall on in right center as well. Tibbs and him going back to back to right center but. The cool thick air keeping that ball in the air and making it playable at the warning track for, for the Hatter. So you know he's going to want to steal one right here. Low and outside three and one. Drew Ferreau would be next. Yeah, Jaime Ferreira, three one count. Got a runner on second. You do have an open base. Jaime's going to be looking for the fastball. But if I'm Ty Van Dyke, I may take my chances and throw my curveball here. Missed outside. A two out walk to Ferrer puts two on for Drew Ferreau. There's only been one hit in the inning. It was the Cam Smith single that got Williams from first to third. Second walk of the inning issued by Ty Van Dyke. And here's Ferreau who's one for three with a double. Daniel Latham on his way out. Zach Fly, and we are scoreless no more. Drew Ferro with two on, two out, and swings out of his shoe tops on the first pitch fastball. Yeah, that's a big time move right there. Every time I got up with a with a new pitcher, I was expecting fastball and trying to hit a ball off the wall. And Drew Ferro was doing the same thing right there, especially with runners in scoring position. You gotta take your hats. They swung through back-to-back -back fastballs from Shine. Now Stetson last chance for the Hatters all of the sudden in the middle of the batting order scheduled for the top of the ninth. Oh two. Fastball misses in tight. Florida State will head north up to Clemson South Carolina tangle with the fourth ranked Tigers who have opened 17 and two. It's going to be some good baseball being played up there this weekend, that's for sure. Hit the other way and drifting out of play. Still one ball, two strikes on Ferro, who hit his team leading 13th double of the season, his first time up back in the second. That is the only extra base hit we've had in this game. Yeah, and Drew's, Drew Ferro's, what, 13th? Double of the short season already. 13 doubles in 19 games. Nothing wrong with that. In the air to medium left center field. That's Hughes. And that's out number three. Seminoles, it's different pitchers to go eight shutout innings in this game. Right. Four states have already put up 11 strikeouts and they're bringing in their strikeout guy, Car uh, Carson Dorsey. Who's been electric? Like you said, he has been electric so far this year. And they, Florida State's used him probably the most out of the pen so far, and it's because of his ability to throw so many strikes. He faces the middle of Stetson's batting order: Desera, Handel, and Moran scheduled. Desera falls behind, nothing in two. He's been the big power hitter through the early season, slugging percentage of. 700 coming in with the team lead seven home runs but he's been held hitless in this game check swing he went around Dorsey strikes out Desera on three pitches to open up the ninth yeah they Florida State pitching staff has kept Desera off balance this entire day two flyouts to center and two strikeouts that look just about like that swing and miss stuff at what we call the old 55 footer. But Dorsey, quick work of a very, very good hitting Desera. Now strike one into Handel. Mike Handel pinch hit back in the sixth inning with two on and two out and flew out to shallow center field. Transfer from Fairfield. 
where he was second team all Metro Atlantic Athletic Conference last year. A native of Garden City, New York. Dorsey just missing with that fastball in the last one. Just misses, misses yeah. again. Another close fastball called ball two. Dorsey's hard throwing lefty. From everything I've gathered, I didn't get to watch him last year. He played junior college ball in Panama City uh, last year, but after talking to the head coach at TCC, he said this guy's really upped his game in just a year. Late appeal down to third, no swing, and another close miss. And Jackson West trying to frame that one a little bit, and yeah, I'll tell you what, three and one, but you wouldn't wouldn't know it. He's only missed his three balls have only missed by a combined about four inches. Popped up behind third, Smith out there into foul territory to us. An awkward looking three one swing from Handel and the Hatters are down to their final out tonight. It's a good job by a veteran pitcher just to throw it in the zone make that guy work. Landon Moran. 0 for 2 with the walk. Takes a narrow miss for ball one. The Seminole faithful wanted that. That's a really good pitch. And, you know, Dorsey is not missing by much, but home plate umpire Matthew Schaefer not giving him the corner on the outside right now. There's a knee high strike, one and one. Moran has one home run in 72 at bats this year. And hit that home run Friday night at Jacksonville. Line to second. This game is over. A shoestring catch made by Perot, and Florida State stays.